Well, if the question is, do I know anyone who uh, does not support or who opposes the Kasikiapukum thesis, the answer is yes. I think there's a very small handful of people who do support it. I think most of the traditional Catholics do not support it, including those who understand it and those who don't understand it. I think there are those who understand what the thesis is and those who don't understand. But I think they all who oppose it find it to be, just on the face of it, kind of spurious. As I do, I consider it to be rather spurious. One must always remember with regard to the thesis of Kasikiakum, which basically makes a distinction between the material papacy and the formal papacy. I, I mean, I don't want to go into long discussions about this. But that, uh, Pape, that Francis is the Pope materially, but formally he does not have the authority of, of the Pope. Okay? I mean, that's a simp maybe an oversimplification, but it comes down to that, basically. Uh, this is just an attempt to try to somehow salvage the situation today with Francis and the modernists taking control in the Vatican. This is uh, one, one of many different attempts to try to deal with the crisis in the church and uh, try to account for it and allow for it. This is an, a, an, an attempt evidently to see how well the papacy can continue this way because if Francis is a material pope, then we could say that his appointments of cardinals could be legitimate or at least, you know, they could be honest to goodness cardinals and they would have the power to elect a true pope in the future. And that's how we avoid a serious problem with state of Picantism today. So this is kind of a strange a hybrid, if you will, of being state of Picantist and not being state of Picantist. Being state of Picantist as far as the authority of the papacy in the church and not, and not state of Picantist with regard to somebody actually sitting in the chair of Peter. <laughs> so um, one must bear in mind, though, that uh, people are grasping for straws right now to explain what's going on in the church. It's unprecedented. So inevitably, people are going to be scrambling to try to find a solution. Ordinarily, the, the answer would be given to us by the magisterium of the church. But that's precisely what is now under attack. People are left to kind of um, say, scramble to find uh, some kind of plausible answer they can intellectually uh, accept or emotionally accept. The thesis of Kazikiakum is just one such attempt. One has to remember, though, it is only a thesis. It's just a theory is all it is. It's somebody's theory. Delorier, the Dominican theologian, came up with this theory. So, I mean, it's, it's very new. It's kind of a reaction or response to the changes in the church brought in by modernism, the revolution of the modernists. As a theory, I mean, it, it has no real weight behind it. One looks at, you know, theological arguments in its favor. Then one decides whether these theological arguments have any validity or not. Personally, I think there are a number of problems with it that are so grave that I don't think you can distinguish uh, in the papacy between the material papacy and the formal papacy. The papacy is what it is. Its very essence is that you have authority, right? Authority to feed the lambs and feed the sheep, to speak and act as the shepherd. So how can we materially and formally you know, distinguish or separate that? Sounds like Solomon saying, well, cut the baby in half and we'll solve the problem. So uh, I reject this thesis of Kasiki Akum and um, I find it to be not only unsatisfactory, I find it to be untenable in terms of Catholic teaching. I think one has to do a certain amount of finessing, to say the least, maybe even violence to Catholic theological teaching in order to make the thesis of Kasiki Akum look plausible. I don't believe it is possible.